Good morning once again. It is a beautiful day in Wyoming. It's a little on the chilly side, but it's okay. We're in the shop. I'm done with my video making video series and I'm just really needing to get back on the lathe and make some dust. And today's project is going to be a honey dipper. All right, through the magic of editing, I'm going to show you the honey dipper that I'm about to make. Now I've been churning honey dippers the last few days and there are a few of them right there. I think I'm going to go for this particular form. Here are a number of long wooden blanks that are uh, you know, really good options for churning a honey dipper. I could probably get two out of this one and two out of this one. I found a really, really pretty piece of cherry in that box. So this is going to be the project for today. Let me get that chucked up in my lathe and we'll start turning. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of some of the honey dippers that I have turned. And here's a very tiny one. I've got this between a, a stub center with this uh, retractable point here. And the more I use this, the more I like it. It's, uh, it's kind of neat. And then I've got my multi-star live center in the tailstocks. And all I'm really doing is putting a little bit of pressure on the tailstock. I would ordinarily rough this down with a spindle roughing gouge, and so would you, probably. I'm going to take this opportunity to just practice with a skew chisel. This happens to be an Allen Lacer skew chisel. Now as I make this cut with my skew chisel, you'll notice that the angle is very low. Most of the pressure I am exerting on this piece of wood is going into the headstock. Here's a close-up of that uh, cut. It's a really nice sheer cut. That's going to be a really pretty piece of wood for my honey dipper. And you notice I had the long point down and leading. And that's something that Richard Raffin used to do in his videos. And it really makes a very nice shear cut when you have that sort of an angle as opposed to using the long point up. And that works pretty good. So I've just about got that down. I'm going to um, get that totally round. Now I sort of like the shape of this honey dipper. I really like the handle. Gives you something to hold on to back here. A little bit delicate in here. And this particular honey dipper is about seven inches long. So I'm going to mark this point right here because I need to leave a little bit of room uh, to cut this off at the very end. I'm not going to put this into a scroll chuck of any kind. I'm going to do it between centers start to finish. Over here I've got maybe uh, a good inch more and I think I'm going to make it you know like that long. It'll be cool. I like that. So mark that and that And this part here that you actually pick the honey up with, let's just uh, sort of aim for maybe a little bit bigger segment up there. And the rest of the handle, I can kind of eyeball that. Now I'm ready to lay out my grooves right up here and I've just got a little divider that uh, I'm going to mark my grooves with, make that a little bit more scientific. And I'm going to just start from one end here and I'll put this leg into that groove and just keep going across. Now 
Now I'm going to take a parting tool and establish the depth of each one of these grooves. Now I've got the very bottom of those grooves established and I can fine tune those a little bit later. I will decide whether I want to keep them square at the bottom or make them V-shaped. So on to a little profiling. Now these are not necessarily finishing cuts, but at this time I can practice using my skew chisel and if I mess up it's not the end of the world. So I just continue to narrow this area down in preparation for those final cuts. Now I decided to just go ahead with the skew chisel. I've got a different one that I'm uh, profiling this with. And I've got the lathe speed on the highest belt and I'm probably turning about 2500 or 3000 RPM. Now I continue to shape the end of my honey dipper with my skew chisel. And most of these V cuts I'm cutting right now are done with a long point down. And this gives me a little bit better visibility going into that cut. I'm starting to vibrate as my honey dipper starts to flex a bit and I uh, have to back this up with my hand to prevent the wood riding up on the tool and having a big problem. And now I start to create points on the business end of my honey dipper with my detailing gouge. Now I've decided to use my sky cam and my overhead monopod. Somebody in one of my video making videos commented about that uh, stick that's sticking out at 45 degrees. That really is just a monopod that you use for a camera and I've got it attached to a block of wood. So there we go. The monopod. Now I am finding this end of my honey dipper a little on the clunky side so I need to lighten that up a little bit. I've been using this detail gouge and I still can't get into those grooves very well so I've got an old tool that's been with me for many years. It's pretty worthless as any kind of a gouge except I've got that profiled at a very sharp angle and I'm going to get down there with this tool. Now this really is the best tool for this job. It's repurposed and it's not very good for much more than what I'm doing right now. And as I continue, I really need to back up this honey dipper with my left hand. There, I like that a lot better. The last thing I'm going to do on this end of my honey dipper, I'm going to take a skew chisel and just take off the very tips of those and make them a little bit more square. If I leave those sharp to a point, they, they might tend to break off. Just very lightly I'll just kind of work that down. Now the next step in my honey dipper project is to uh, do a little shaping on this handle. Alright, and here's the end of my honey dipper. I'm going to just define that with my tool. And since I have quite a bit of wood to take off, I'm going to use my spindle roughing gouge on this. And I'm also going to back this up with my hand because this is getting a little bit uh, thin and I don't want it to break. So it's going to vibrate and here we go. Now with my left hand that's blocking most of the camera view here, I am backing this up so it doesn't flex very much. Uh, I'm marking with a pencil a transition point then I'm going to taper down from either side of that pencil line and I continue to shape this and just remove quite a bit of wood. Alright, now I've got this part of my honey dipper 
uh, to the thickness I want. It's a really pretty piece of wood. I can't wait to get some finish on that. I'm going to work on the very top of this. This is still a little bit too fat right here, but I like it so far. Now as I continue to shape the end of the handle on my honey dipper, I'll make one more point that as I get closer to the headstock, the wood is supported fairly well by the drive center, so I can take a little bit more aggressive cut. And I'm going to go back to a little smaller skew chisel and work on this uh, end of my honey dipper. Now at this point in the process, it's uh, simply a matter of going from one end to the other and reducing the thickness so I can eventually part off my honey dipper. Now it's also important as I complete one of these V-cuts that my tool at the end of that cut be straight up and down or I'm going to get a catch. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other end and I'm going to turn the camera off, do a little sanding on this and put some finish on it and I'll cut it off. Now I've got my honey dipper sanded and a little finish on it. I put some tongue oil on that and I'm ready to part this off. As I mentioned before, I didn't put this into a chuck, so I'm going to go from this end to the other end and I'll go back and forth and just keep getting this smaller and smaller. But I need to back that up with my hand. This is pretty stable right here. I can, I can make a fairly heavy cut on that. and I'm going to work my way down, take some of that waste away. And I'm going to just peel that off with my smallest skew chisel. I need to do a, a long point down. V cut on the very end. I'm going to get that down fairly thin. Alright, now that's still attached. It's probably a millimeter on there. I'm going to go to the other end and part it off. Now I'll show you a close up of the entire honey dipper after I get this parted off. This is a really, really pretty piece of wood. Now, I'm at the handle end of my honey dipper, and again, this is pretty stable right here. It's going into my stub center. So I can take a pretty aggressive cut. Waste away some of that wood so I can uh, get my tool in there to work. Now I'm going to start making just basically a V-cut going into the end of my handle. No better tool for doing this. This is the dangerous part because if I get a run back I'm going to ruin my handle and I'll have to cut all that out when I edit. And I'm not going to do that. So I get that very thin. So we're in the ballpark. Um, here's an important point. I want to part this off on the headstock end. If I do it on the tailstock and this is still spinning, I could damage the uh, end grain fibers of the wood. So we'll cut it off down here, clean it up with a little knife or something, and do a little bit of sanding on it. I'm okay. I still got a half a millimeter on that. It's not bad. So we want to just keep going until it comes apart. Oh, and it's it's right there. Did you see it shake? I'm gonna to have to get my hand in here and and hold that. There we go. All right. So that's not too bad. I didn't mess up the end. I'll get that in the camera and give you a, a view of the finished honey dipper. Sweet! Oh, there I go again. 
Now you may have noticed in that last clip, the second I touched my honey dipper, it broke off. So there's a lesson for you. Anyway, thank you once again for tuning in and I'll talk to you next time.